Hello, this is Dr. Flight, and uh, today we're going to uh, go through just a couple points to finish up marketing in today's world. So this is part two, and again, this is an introduction to uh, marketing strategy and uh, some of the higher level ideas that marketers or CMOs are facing in the world today. So just to uh, get things started here, we'll move forward. And um, one of the concepts in regards to marketing strategy is that an organization should have some type of overall uh, theoretical or philosophical approach to how they're going to compete and how they're going to um, be in business. So in management, there's they spend a lot of time thinking about sort of the um, the approach that the company will take in terms of how it views competitors and how it views its growth model and, and some things like that. In marketing, it's kind of a similar thing where um, oftentimes a company or an organization will have some overarching um, kind, kind of philosophy that drives how they do business. So there are several of these four of which are referenced here and also in the text. A differentiation orientation is an orientation or a philosophy that the way we're going to compete, our, our, our competitive advantage will be formed by being different or distinct from our competitors. And so oftentimes this is a very common approach that marketers use in the sense that they will communicate to the market like their benefits um, based on how those benefits are different or differentiate themselves from competitors or other options that are out there in the marketplace. So we, we basically make the case that, yeah, you should buy our product because we're different and being different is better. And like we're better in these certain ways because our product's not like everybody else's. Um, so that's one kind of philosophy. Another philosophy is something called a market orientation. Now, market orientations, um, the, the whole, it's, it's a broad term, and it, it really came about in the early 2000s. And when we talk about a market orientation, it means that we do a lot of market research and we study our competitors as well as our customers. And using information that we do research from or get, gather from research on both our competitors and our customers, we drive our decision-making process to best serve uh, our needs. So we see what the market wants, we see what our customers want, and we look to deliver that. But at the same time, we're also focusing on what our competitors are doing and we're reacting to their behavior as well. So this is a process where, um, or a philosophy that uses a lot of data and a lot of information um, from the marketplace and from market research. And that, the, the, that information is used to help form the decisions of strategy, like how we will strategically uh, behave in order to position our product to the customer's best and, and also our competitors. So even though it says market orientation, it also includes our competitors evaluation too. And we try to understand what they're gonna do so that we can make good decisions. Relationship orientations. Um, so, so again, this is kind of like one of those, those eras we talked about in part one, where the relationship era of, of marketing or business um, absolutely deals with this idea that um, when we do business, what we're going to focus on is meeting the customer's needs um, with a long-term perspective. And, and that's really the key here, that we would rather invest time and money and effort in developing a relationship because that relationship will yield long-term benefits. And, and again, um, this is where the customer lifetime value concept really emerges, uh, where we're not just 
bringing in a customer to make a one-time sale, we're wanting to develop that customer into a long-term customer and have a long-term relationship with them. The final um, orientation or concept, which, which is one where we're really moving more towards um, in a lot of different ways is one-to-one -one marketing. And you might think of this as customization. And when we think about it in marketing, though, we, we really think about it, you can kind of think about it at the four P's if you want, like price, place, product, and promotion. But what it is is where we take each of those elements and the different pieces that we do in marketing and we customize them specifically, specifically for each customer. So if somebody goes to um, our store or our website or they come in contact with us, they're going to get a specially designed product that meets their needs. And that product will be priced specifically for them. Um, they'll receive specific advertisements that relate just to the things they're interested in. Um, and so there's a lot of um, data that pushes this. And now uh, the reason why it's more prevalent today is because our digital capabilities allow for us to be more, um, to customize, customize our appeals, customize our pricing, customize our delivery. You know, all of those things are being really um, capable or, or possible as a result of a lot of the digital environments that we do business in today. Um, so one-to-one uh, -one marketing is much less of a uh, thing in a traditional brick and mortar, um, you know, like store, retail store, um, because that's more of a mass environment. Um, so that shift though, in all of the things that we do in marketing has really, really been pronounced, um, especially since the digital environment has, has really taken, taken over. Okay, so think about then what drives people to, or what drives organizations to make strategic decisions and kind of the philosophy and ethos behind, behind those decision-making um, approaches. And these are popular ones that you'll see in, in the marketing area. Okay, so moving on, um, a couple big takeaways that we're gonna talk about here um, in the rest of this chapter is, and one is the balance of power. So it used to be that the organization or the business um, had a significant amount of um, power in exchanges and in relationships where exchanges are going to take place. And part of this is because of a information um, inequity. So in other words, or, or asymmetry, where businesses had a lot of information, like they knew a lot about the product that they were producing, they know their costs, they know a lot about uh, the supply side of, of, of business. Um, and in the past, the customers really didn't have a lot of that information. Um, but today, and to a great extent, the power is shifting, if you will, to the customer, um, giving them much more of a level playing field in the marketplace to be able to negotiate and to understand what, what all is going on. So a couple points to talk about um, here um, is this idea of limitless access to information. And it's not limitless, but it, it's becoming to the point where um, customers know a ton about the uh, companies they do business with. And they can leverage that information to get the best deal in the marketplace. And so where there was an information asymmetry before, where the seller knew a lot more about the market than the buyer, that's sort of becoming more even now where the, the buyers know, as, know sometimes as much as the sellers, and they're able to use that information to make a good deal for themselves. Now, taking this in mind, this notion of a market orientation that we spoke about just a minute ago really comes into play where um, to, to be able to have um, the best situation to be able to produce a good product, um, to bring to the customer the products that they want, 
um, to bring to them good deals, you have to know a lot about them. And so remember I said in a market orientation, a lot of how a market orientation is derived is based on market research and really understanding your customer and your competitors. Um, and that's exactly what helps the firm today deliver good value to a marketplace that's really knowledgeable. Um, so when we say like a market orientation is not only desirable, but in some cases a necessity, Today, you know, in, in this time of doing business, it absolutely is. Um, being able to understand and make decisions strategically as a result of the information that you have uh, about your consumers and your competitors um, really, really helps you be most efficient. Um, but at the end of the day, it's kind of a reaction to this idea that customers are also really savvy, far more it's far better in terms of decision making um, and informed than they ever used to be. So it's best for us to kind of react in a positive way to, to help them help them out. So in addition, uh, the text talks about some other um, ideas here, specifically about uh, the effects of this shift of information um, and, and, and the power that that possesses and that shift moving away from the business to the customer. Um, so a couple points just to uh, iterate. Um, the shift, um, there, there's been a shift in a great way in production so that uh, companies are, are finding it easier to copy each other in products um, and it, it becomes harder for companies to have a strategic competitive advantage for a long period of time. So like if there's a lot of companies out there and they start producing a product, that product eventually becomes a commodity and commodities by definition are non-differentiable. -differenti so in other words, you have a product that comes out for a short period of time, uh, it's unique to you, but then others start making it. And once others start making it, it becomes like a commodity, which means that you can't really charge an extra price for it. Um, you have to find lots of different unique ways to show differentiation from you and your competitors. Um, and so that drives price down. And um, and customers, of course, are, are, are savvy to this and they understand this. There's also, in many ways, um, something that's always been happening, it's not new, is that each generation of consumer tends to purchase and buy differently. And so when we say there's a shift in generational values, um, th th that always happens. And the shift now uh, tends to be more towards experiences, where one thing you see is like a lot of... Um, a lot of growth in services, for instance, and um, less growth in uh, durable goods uh, in terms of, of what customers are looking for nowadays and actually looking to spend their money as a percentage of their income. So if you think about like buyers today and think about what they're spending money on, a lot of the things, a greater percentage of what they're spending money on are um, services, um, things like events, and experiences, uh, vacations, um, media. Uh, so the amount people spend percentage-wise of their budget on media, like uh, entertainment, uh, things like that, uh, tends to show a, a greater shift towards these transient types types of products. Um, again, we, we kind of talked about this also in... Um, in when we talk about the eras of doing business where the customer is a collaborator more so now with, with the organization and business that is producing a good. So in other words, when a, when a company produces a product, it's, it is less and less exclusively produced by the company, but rather um, the customer play, is playing now a stronger role in actually creating the value um, or creating and defining what value is and co-creating value as well 
Um, and, and that's just kind of something where we think of customers maybe more as collaborators than purchasers, um, it, you know, in, in the way things are, are moving forward. So um, some questions, again, this is just kind of an opportunity to um, reflect. So as you're reading the text, if you're thinking about kind of understanding, um, you know, the, the whole you know, text and all of that, think about these different approaches or philosophies that um, can be used and that are used by different companies and understand that different companies, you know, kind of use these as a modus operandi, as their, as their, um, as their, the, the thing that drives their decision-making process. Um, also be able to understand, kind of think about these shifts of power um, away from the firm and marketer to the customer and how the firm should really be reacting you know, to, to that new reality. It's kind of like a new reality. Some companies don't uh, do well when there are these big shifts, um, but the companies that do well will embrace the customer's lifetime value. They'll embrace the idea as the customer as a collaborator. Um, they'll embrace this idea of customization um, as well. Um, and uh, understand that that's how they need to differentiate themselves oftentimes as opposed to from a, to, from a product perspective. So, all right, let's move forward. Um, the last thing that we talk about in this chapter is something that is specifically focused on um, by, by these authors, and it's something called Big M and Little M. And we focus on this idea and concept in this specific class because this is a strategy class. Um, and so big M is, is um, you know, the M stands for marketing. Um, so big M is strategic marketing. And if you were a CMO, a chief marketing officer, then your job in the organization is to focus on the big M. It's firm level concepts and long-term strategic planning. It's supported at the highest level of the organization. And its goal is to say, well, look, we're doing these things in marketing and the things we're doing in marketing drive or at least support the overall goals of the organization. So if our organization has a mission and our organization has objectives and our organization has certain goals that they want to achieve, as a CMO at the big M level, I need to make sure that what we're doing in marketing supports all of those organizational elements, the mission, uh, the objectives, the goals, and so forth, right? So the decisions I'm making as a CMO are long-term strategic decisions. Um, and it's the, in the broader sense, thinking about how the marketing function interacts and works within the organization to enhance the organization as a whole. So that's kind of the big M. Um, when we talk about little m um, or little marketing, it doesn't mean that it's less important so much. But what we're talking about is tactical marketing. So actually doing and forming our uh, marketing plan, executing our marketing plan, you know, deciding what our pricing strategy will be, doing a perceptual mapping exercise, um, setting price, um, understanding our distribution strategy and our, and our advertising strategies, uh, managing a sales force. You know, these are all things that are done sort of at the functional level. They're functional level activities. You can call it tactical marketing. Um, but, but what it is, is it's the execution of the big picture. So now as a CMO, you still have to understand and you still have to coordinate to some extent and you still have to know the little lamb elements 
Um, but you're putting those little L M elements into the context of the big, the big picture. Okay, so so this is a concept then, as a marketer, and specifically in this class, we we need to understand that the big M is the overarching picture, thinking of how marketing interacts functionally with the whole rest of the organization. Um, little M is the doing of marketing. Um, it, it's often like this idea where we're doing segmenting, we're doing some targeting, we're doing some positioning, we're doing the, the actual four P's of marketing, and, and we're getting that, that work done. Okay, so um, so yeah, so that so that kind of wraps up this chapter. Actually, um, this is the last element or piece of it. Um, if you have any questions relating to um, what we are doing, please let me know. Um, key takeaways: um, use customer center. So these are just kind of the follow-up elements um, of what we have talked about or would talk about um, with the big M, little m uh, concept. Um, when we're, again, the CMO, uh, following a customer-centric market orientation, um, you know, being, being that uh, customized or market-oriented CMO uh, is, is one of those big things that we'd look for from, you know, take away from this chapter. Um, being able to manage an information, gathering, organize, and act upon it. So again, having a market orientation and being kind of that customer-centric kind of firm that we need to be actually totally relies on the information of data. Um, and whether it's an internal data system or an external marketing research company or whatever, being able to use information is a big deal. Um, takeaways, being able to be nimble and function quickly, uh, culturally, uh, and then within changes in your, with your competitors and being able to adjust and be flexible in a big M, little M capacity. That, again, that's kind of one of the key points of this particular class, uh, where we, we look from a strategic perspective, what would a CMO do? What is the role of marketing to drive this company? But we also have to get our hands dirty and understand the little M too. So, um, so that's kind of an idea to take away um, as we move forward. Finally, um, this wraps up kind of where we are in this first you know, set of material. The purpose of a marketing, the role of marketing is to create value and to create and manage exchanges, which means finding customers and selling customers the product that we've created or the value that we've created. Um, th those are, th that is the fundamental role. That is what marketers do. And again, that's kind of from an economic theory perspective, but um, creating value if you don't create value, that's what customers buy from you. Um, you know, whether it's a product or a service, um, you're doing something that they need or you're creating something that they need and we have to do that. I mean, that has to be understood, um, that that has to be developed. Um, and, and then getting that value into the hands of the customer and um, making the exchange is, is kind of what we do. So if, again, kind of how we approach that process, you know, whether we look at it from a, a different, like whether it's a relationship model perspective or a differentiation model perspective or, or, or one like that, um, w w that's our strategic you know, decision that we need to make and make it work. So, all right, let me know if you have any questions and um, good luck with this. And uh, anyways, have, uh, have a good day.